Hey y'all, what's up? It's Kristen and welcome back to my channel. I'm doing part slash episode four, I think, of Mystery Mail. I've kind of gotten lost because my filming schedule is so thrown, but um, I'm really excited for this shop. I obviously have not opened this package. If you're new to the Mystery Mail series, I will leave it linked up here in a like playlist for you. But basically what I do in mystery mail is I reached out to a ton of different shops who are mostly new to me and I asked them if I sent them anywhere from 25 to $30 if they would fill an order for me and not tell me what's in it so that I can do a live unboxing, be completely surprised, and then challenge myself to use it in a memory spread in my planner. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm really excited. This shop that I'm featuring this time is Rose and Tea. I love this shop's aesthetic. I feel like they are so unique and they have that type of design where when you see their things in a planner, you can like immediately spot that it's from Rose and Tea shop. So I really like that about them. Their advent was killer. Um, so I'm really excited to see what's inside, but let's go ahead and crack this baby open. So satisfying. This is kind of a thick package, not gonna lie. Ooh, yes. Their packaging is always like 10 out of 10, bomb as hell. Like, look at the, the details though. Like this stamp up here says Rose and Tea. So cute, just adorable. Like packaging is always on point. I hate ripping open beautiful packaging because I'm like a monster. Sorry if you can hear those alarms going off. All right. So here is our package, my name beautifully written. Thank you so much, ladies. And we are going to open it. Uh, okay, ooh, there's a thick little order in here. All right, I'm gonna get these out. Oh, this is from their, you guys, I think this is actually from their advent from what I understand. Um, I feel like this was from their advent. I definitely recognize this a little bit off the bat. Uh, so she did, do, 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 yes, okay, sorry. I'm like making sure that I don't show my address. Ooh, this is like super beautifully, I don't know what material this is, but it's okay, buttery and just gorgeous. These journaling cards are so pretty. I'm gonna challenge myself and I'm gonna put one of these in my planner. Like I'm gonna washi tape it or something, like do something pretty with them because they're so beautiful. I have to do that, okay. I'm so excited right now, thank you. Then we're opening this bad boy up. Kristen, thank you for reaching out to us for your series. Um, we're so excited to be a part of it and hope you enjoy everything. The kit we sent is our anniversary mini kit. I can't wait to see what you do with it, Rose and Tea. Oh my gosh, yay! So, okay, then I'm like really stoked for this kit. I'm gonna flip through you through everything else that came in the order first, of course, and then we'll go through the rest. So this is their business card. I think it's so beautiful and unique. They have like a little flat lay of just some really iconic doodles from their shop. I love their little coffee slash teacup. I think that's so them. Like when I think of Rosen Tea, I think of that. It's like immediate, it's their logo. Um, this like flower doodle is pretty much widespread across everything. And I think that is so cool. Then we have this card here with more of their handles. Oh, and this one has like a sticker on top. Oh, these are stickers. You can peel this up. That's so cute. I'm not going to because I want to keep it like that. And then you have this little sticker die cut, which is really pretty, like a little TN. And then this is what came in my order. So I have the books doodle, which are so vibrant and gorgeous. I love the books. They know I love books as a teacher. I love book icons and these are beautiful. Then the bow laptop. I feel like these are also like low key iconic to their shop. Like when I like their bow is so recognizable, you know? Really cute. The lattes, oh my gosh. And look at the detail, you guys. The latte foam is in a shape of a rose, which is like resembling their logo. Iconic, iconic. It's all in the details. All in the details, bitches. Okay, let me get you refocused. I haven't filmed in so long. I feel like I'm so rusty. And then the beautiful mini kit. So this one is the Lovely Corner Cafe. And that print right there is the journaling card, so cute. So we have four full boxes right here. I love the little macarons, those are so cute. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. This is gorgeous, I love this. I only wish my setups could look this good. I feel like 
T has like the most gorgeous Instagram posts. If you guys don't follow both their shop Instagram and then T's personal planning Instagram, oh my gosh, you are missing out. It is so good. So eight full boxes and then these are third boxes, quarter boxes, flags, and dividers. These flags are so cute. I love that down there. Oh, look, their logo is different on this one. Oh, is that a sticker? That's a sticker, y'all. Ooh. Then we have our functional items. So these are like sidebar-esque to me. And then these are just like fun, different style check boxes. But I feel like you can kind of cut these up and low-key use it for deco. So that's cute too. And then we have some... I guess these are also functional pieces, like you can use them as bullet points, but again, also could be used for deco. Really cool. And then we have some icons that match the style of the kit, which is so beautiful. I love this icon in her shop. I feel like I bought that. That was like one of my first um, sticker sheets that I ever bought from them was because of that. And then this movie marquee, I actually use that all the time when I go to my friend's shows in Austin. So really cute. I'm so excited. This reminds me of Viv because she always does the Grove collaborative hauls, like the cleaning brand. And when I think of Grove, Grove Collaborative, I think of that glass bottle. So that kind of reminds me of Viv Loves to Plan. That's so funny. But um, that is everything that I got in this mystery mail. And I'm so excited. I'm sorry about the voice. I'm so sorry. I'm actually going to hoard this as I do with all of their packaging. So thank you so much for always having iconic packaging. We love it. Um, and I'm really excited to dig into this. I think... I think it's going to be a little bit hard because it's a mini kit and by mini kit, it's like a mini mini kit. So I honestly feel like if I were to open up my A6, it would be like slamming in that A6. But I always do the memory spreads in, um, in my vertical. So I am not going to stray away from the series. I am going to make it work. Uh, let me see if I can flip to our week. I am going to make it fit in here. I think the biggest challenge though is just going to be like the boxes. So my layering game is definitely going to have to be a one, but because this kit is so beautiful and airy and light with the colors, I am going to try and keep the plans pretty light. So I'm going to do like minimal planning. Um, not like minimal as in like the style, but like I'm not going to fill up all of my days, like each column with like three to four things. I'm going to try and just do like one to two things, maybe three per box. Uh, and I think that'll keep the integrity of the kit like the kit's theme. I think it'll be more consistent that way. And I think that's how it's going to look best for my style of planning. So that is the goal. We are going to incorporate all of the sheets that they sent us. So the whole mini kit and the matching icons. And then we of course are going to incorporate these three sheets, which are super usable and like, it's going to be easy peasy to incorporate, um, without a doubt. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump into it. So if you're interested in seeing that and having me answer your questions, definitely stay tuned. Hey y'all, it's voiceover Kristen. And before we get started with the questions that you asked me over on Instagram, as always, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Rose and Tea Shop and some of my favorite things that I really, really enjoy buying from the shop. So first things first, they are on Etsy. So if you are typing in roseandteashop.com, I don't think it'll come up. Definitely check them out over on Etsy. Um, I feel like they're most known for their like fire ass packaging, but also their like really beautiful hand-drawn doodles. I think that they're style is very unique to them and like I said earlier it's super easy to spot them in a spread and immediately recognize that that is something from Rose and Tea's shop so I think that's really cool um, they are a sister owned business so they're obviously both women owners um, and they're also minority owned which is really great I love to support different businesses especially minority businesses and specifically minority women owned businesses that's like a double whammy for me and I'm so ready to hit that button like just like support like I'm just ready <laughs> I'm ready to be there for them um, so that's a little bit about like their overall shop some of my favorite things that come from their shop is definitely obviously their doodles because I feel like, again, they're very unique and they're super usable. But my absolute favorite thing I've bought from them is hands down their date covers. I feel like their date covers are so underrated, but they are so sleek and so cute. And I haven't seen a shop do anything remotely similar. And I think they look amazing. They come in like their staple colors, which are the pink, the light pink, and I believe a gray. 
and it actually might have a dark gray but i can't remember exactly i have like three different colorways i definitely have the pink and then the blush which is the light pink and then i have a light gray but they're really awesome and then you can even pick up like the little date covers and you can choose what shape you want your date numbers to come in so i really like them i again feel like they're super unique it was one of the first things that i've ever picked up from their shop but i think that was i even hauled it like a long time ago um but yeah, I really like the uniqueness of Rose and Tea Shop. I love that they're women owned. I love that they're minority owned. And I genuinely just love how involved they are in the community. I feel like, you know, I, I did see them at Define and Flourish. I think I saw them at SPC, but I genuinely cannot remember because SPC was just such a blur. Um, but I feel like they're very involved in the community. I feel like I always see T's name come up in comments or I see T, you know, shouting out other planner girls or always, you know, like I just think it's really amazing when you're involved in the community that supports you and you support them right back. And I think that's incredible. So that was my little tidbit about Rose and T. Their shop is currently closed because they just had a massive anniversary sale, which was wildly successful. So, so congratulations to you two ladies for that. Unfortunately, this kit was from their anniversary box so it is not available in their shop but from what I understand they do offer different mini kits um, in limited quantities so maybe when their shop reopens definitely go and see if another mini kit is like similar to your style that you can pick up instead but this one is not available so I'm really sorry about that you guys did not disappoint with these questions. I had over 85 questions, so I'm going to do my best to answer as many of them as I can. And again, I'm just really sorry if I don't get to your question, but maybe on the next one I can. Um, so Eileen Plans asked me, what's your favorite fast food place? I really like Panera Bread. I don't know if Panera Bread counts as a fast food place, but it's definitely my favorite. Um, there's one like two minutes from the apartment and there's one like four minutes away from my work and there was one five minutes away from my parents' house where I used to live. So I've always been in close proximity to a Panera Bread and it's just super good and it's very consistent and delicious because everything is frozen. So I love that. <laughs> um, Plan with Martha asked me, hi, you're awesome. How often have you had a planner funk and how did you get out of it? Also, how do you get through FOMO? So thank you. You're awesome too. Yes, planner funk is so real. I feel like I go through planner funk at least two or three times a year and it's definitely amplified whenever you make YouTube videos because I mean several YouTubers say this all the time, but whenever you make videos and you have to adhere to a schedule and your planning kind of becomes something that feels like work and it's no longer a hobby at that point and sometimes I feel that even when I'm shopping like I'll try and check out new shops and I'll, I'll be like oh my god that's cute that's cute that's cute and I'm like yeah but you know that would never match a kit from this shop and that shop is really popular right now and that's what's going to get me views on this video so things like that kind of like really weigh you down whenever you whenever you're making videos on YouTube, or at least maybe it's just me, but um, there's definitely like an unprecedented pressure whenever you do start to get views on your videos and you do get people that comment like, oh my gosh, like I wish you come out with more videos. Like there's just an, an unexpected pressure that comes with it. And it's definitely something that I put on myself, not that you guys do for, not that you guys pressure me or anything. So I get into a planner funk pretty often. Um, like every couple of months or so, especially when like in my actual life, I get very stressed out. The planner just kind of takes like a back seat and then I just separate myself further and further from it. So I usually get out of it by turning the camera off and planning for myself. So I would use a kit that, you know, maybe I didn't schedule out. Like I, I think whenever I was scheduling my kits out, that's really when I was genuinely getting into my planner funk like a lot so I stopped marking kits for week for a specific week and just kind of like week by week I would just pick up my kit book and I flip through until I found one that I'm like yeah that's really beautiful I'll go with that and I know that doesn't work for everybody but it definitely works for me just letting the reins loose a little bit and realizing that this is a hobby it's not like something that's super structured so you don't have to plan like everybody else and your spreads don't need to look like everybody else's your as long as your spreads look good to you and it works for you then bitch that's all you need honey like it took me forever to figure that out and i, I mean that's really all you got to do like i'm so sick of seeing all these different people planning the exact same fucking thing and i can't even recognize who it is because you're like the spreads don't look it's unique you know like I feel like 
I really like my style of planning. I think it is unique to myself. I feel like when I look at my spreads, I'm like, yeah, I definitely did that. But if somebody come and fuck with my planner, I'd be like, oof, I, I didn't do, I did not do that. Like, don't come look at me, you know? So I don't know. I think just, just remembering that you can plan for yourself and that you don't have to plan for the pressures of YouTube. You don't have to plan to match up to this influencer. You don't have to plan to make sure that this shop can be tagged in your next post like it's really not about that like don't try and make your spreads like oh my gosh i hope i get 25 likes on this spread like bro fuck a like fuck a bad bitch like be you put your damn sticker down and have a great day and i i hope that helps you as far as fomo bitch fuck fomo like you're really not missing out at the end of the day it's a sticker so that's all i can say if you have fomo for advents bitch there's going to be somebody that's going to hate that advent get on facebook ask somebody who hated the advent, I'd like to buy it from you. Same thing with like uh, subscription boxes. If you have FOMO, join that BST. So many different shops have BSTs, which are buy, sell, trade groups on Facebook. Join a BST, put your ISO out there, which is an in search of. Just be like, hey, in search of SPC, April Mystery, it was fire. Can Does somebody not want it? And most of the time, people don't want it. Most of the time, I don't even want my SPC Mystery. And I, I'm subscribed for like over a year. It's ridiculous. But FOMO is a thing. You just have to realize that at the end of the day, it's just a sticker and whatever you spent your money on was probably way more worth it than a sticker. So just keep that in mind, girl. Keep doing you and fuck a bad bitch. You know, Ariel asked me, how is your Texas teacher program going and what's Jax's favorite toy? Ooh, Texas teachers. I've been neglecting it for sure. I need to get back on that ASAP Rocky, but I mean, it'll, it'll be what it'll be. Thank you for asking, though. That's very sweet. Uh, Jax's favorite toy is anything with a high-pitched squeaker. He really likes squeaker toys. They're his absolute favorite. He's not a big, like, uh, tug-of-war person. He doesn't really like that. As a puppy, he kind of liked to play tug-of-war with ropes, but whenever he kind of grew out of that, he doesn't really like ropes anymore. I think it's because he doesn't like the stuff, like, getting stuck on his tongue. <laughs> so he's, like, my little gentle baby. Um, but, yeah, he likes squeaker toys. He most more specifically likes the ones from Zippy Paws that have, like, eight squeakers sewn into a plush toy with no stuffing. Those are his absolute favorite toys. We buy them every single time we see them at Marshall's Home Goods um, just to stock up. And then at Christmas, I end up giving him, like, all the ones that I found the year. So he ends up getting like 18 different toys on Christmas and he's like obsessed and my boyfriend hates it but I mean what are you gonna do I love him so anything with a high-pitched squeaker he adores um do I have a favorite Pokemon my favorite Pokemon is probably like my favorite basic Pokemon is probably Eevee because I like that Eevees like evolve into so many different things and they're all like really great fighting Pokemon. So I really love that. But my favorite fully evolved Pokemon is definitely a Dragonite. I worked my ass off to get my Dragonite and it's cute as fuck. So definitely Dragonite. Um, what's my favorite thing about teaching? My favorite thing about teaching is definitely seeing the personal growth within each scholar. Um hands down like watching somebody who was really shy at the beginning of the year kind of blossom in a matter of weeks and then like becoming more social and then being more confident on top of that like that is what I kind of like live for so those small moments of like the turning point in their life like being able to visually see it because I see them every day that growth is so important at any age and so I think that's like hands down my favorite part just like the idea that you know, something that I may have said may have impacted the way that they, you know, changed their viewpoint or something, or just, you know, like that's just, it's just incredible to get to see it and like firsthand and be a part of it. Like that's definitely my favorite part. Thanks Amy for asking. What is my favorite dessert? I'm a cookie bitch. I love cookies. I love chocolate chip cookies. I love white chocolate, cho white chocolate chip macadamia cookies. Um, I also really like paletas. I'm a big like strawberry paleta girl. I've been eating those like constantly. Um, yeah, definitely. But cookies for sure is like my favorite. Um, if you could only purchase from one standalone shop for character stickers, which shop would it be? Probably paper and milk, probably, but also I really love Helen from the coffee monsters co. So one of those two, but paper and milk is definitely one of my favorite character shops. I just think they're so cute. Like little Maru, he's so adorable, but coffee monsters co has a ton of different options so and she's always putting new shit out but i feel like denise from paper and milk doesn't put out stuff quite as often as the other character shops do so maybe the coffee monsters coast solely for 
the option availability <laughs> because I always feel like Helen is trying to design new things and do more and I think you know I think her hard work definitely shows so I'm gonna go with the coffee monsters call on that one um, what is my favorite book? My favorite book is The Outsiders or The Giver. Actually, it's The Giver for sure. I read The Giver every year because I feel like it gives me a new perspective. Um, and there's always something in that book that could kind of resonate with me. And I don't know, like I just, I, I gain a new perspective or a new thought every time I read it each year, depending on what I went through that year. And I think it's a really cool book. Like there's just so many different aspects to The Giver that you know, Lois Lowry kind of embedded into that book. So I personally love reading it each year. And I think it was actually one of my English teachers from high school who told me you should read that every year, especially when you have hard years, it'll, it'll kind of like open your eyes. And I, and I, I was like, okay, that's fucking dumb. Like, why am I going to read a, the same sorry ass book, ma'am? Like my summer reading list stops that summer, <laughs> but it is, it is very empowering. I don't read it. I'm not going to lie. I don't read it every year but for the most part I, I get to so yeah if uh do you have plans on getting a sibling for Jax, my dog absolutely i would love to get him a little brother or sister um my boyfriend and i have been looking and we're on so many different like application lists and we're waiting and it's just like adoption right now is so hard because everybody and their grandmas want to adopt a dog and that's really amazing so it's like fantastic for the animals but right now I really 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 want a golden retriever and I'm on the waiting list for the two golden retriever rescues in Houston and I'm literally like the 70th person in one line and then I'm like the 50th person in the other so and the process takes so long and only like two dogs become available every month so it's just like really frustrating but I am also constantly on like different animal rescues in Houston like on their websites just seeing which dogs come in the intake but whenever you see a dog coming on intake that would be a good fit for your home I immediately obviously call, try to set an appointment, but the appointments are booked out three weeks in advance because of social distancing and they're limiting the capacity within the shelter. So because of that, by the time that my appointment will come up, the animal that I was interested in that would be a best fit for my apartment or my style of living is no longer available most of the time. So it's just, it's been in a repeated circle. Like we've been on the, like we got really close with two dogs and, um, you know, I think we were like two days out and then they had gotten adopted. So it was just like really sad, but we're definitely still trying. Um, we check in with shelters like every other day, but we're definitely looking. We're in the market for a beautiful little baby puppy or anything less than three years old. We would love to adopt an older dog, but unfortunately with Jax, he doesn't do well with older dogs. Um, so we definitely need a dog that's younger than him. Um, and we prefer it to be a boy because my dog apparently hates girls. So whatever. Anyways, um, uh, da, 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 da. what actor would you want to play you in the movie version of your life? Oh, I don't know. That's a really great question. Ideally, I would love somebody as iconic as like Sandra Bullock. I feel like if you have a movie and Sandra Bullock plays you, you did something phenomenal in your life. Like, I would love Sandra Bullock to play me. She's probably one of my favorite actresses of all time. Like I said, I think she's iconic. Um, as long as somebody like fucking Kristen Stewart doesn't play me, I'm good. I don't need that mouth breather playing my life. Like, oh no, she's always like like fuck you like close your mouth breathe through your nose come on now why does everything have to why do you always look like you're drunk why you know i don't know i don't know that's kind of rude shouldn't have said that but i definitely don't want her to play me in a movie like if they were like we have a great option for you kristen we're gonna have kristen stewart play you i would literally be like actually go ahead and cancel it like i'll give you a refund like cancel this movie asap like please that's that's yeah mm-hmm Good question though. <laughs> what are you most excited about? Um, what are you most excited to do post pandemic? I answered this in a couple videos back, but I am most excited to get to see my sixth grade kiddos that I never got to say bye to. Um, I want to like be able to finally tell them like how highly I think of them and how much I saw them grow and how proud I am of the work that they put in to really get back on track that year of like the growth that they had. Like they went from being a room of 28 individual kids to being a room of 28 students and friends who respect each other and care for one another. And that was so major for me. So 
I just, I want to be able to see those kids and let them know that that year meant so much to me. And even if it was just a really weird sixth grade year for them, it was something extremely memorable and impactful for me. And that, you know, those kids are literally going to live in my heart forever because that was my first class. And it was my first real moment of like, wow, I love <laughs> doing what I do. So just being able to see them again and letting them know like how important they are to me and how much I value them and how much I like hope for them and their lives. That's definitely something I'm looking forward to because um, I, I really miss my kids all the time. My first impression of my boyfriend. So my first impression of Paco was um, that why is everybody think he's so cute? I remember everybody in my school had a crush on him. It was so fucking annoying. I was like, why does everybody think this kid is cute? Because at the time, I only liked white guys. So if you were not a white guy that had a beautiful 401k and like, like if I could look at you and tell that your daddy didn't already put your retirement away and that you weren't going to have a good inheritance, like you weren't my type. I was a gold digger in high school. My whole motto was like, why are you dating in high school? Nobody's rich yet. Like I was that bitch. I'm so sorry. I'm not like that anymore. I'm a whole different person. But yeah, I remember everybody being like, oh my God, Paco is so cute. Did you see Paco? Did you Paco is so cute. And I was like, why the fuck does everybody think Paco is cute? He's not white. <laughs> So I thought it was really annoying, but also Paco was like so different in high school. He's, I mean, he's different to a degree, but he used to have a mohawk and then he would spray paint the tip of his mohawk different colors to match his outfit. And I was like, this is so gross. So that, yeah, that definitely would never have happened in high school for sure. Let's see. Richard Velez 92 asked me, what's one thing that you wish every school should provide for so you don't have to pay for it? Books. Say it with me. B-O-O-K. Books. Books, bitch. Books, bitch. Why the fuck? Books. Books. Why? Why? Why do I? Why? If it is required of me to have a classroom library, so that way my children can read because they are required to read a certain amount of books every fucking week, and they are required to take a quiz every single day on a book, why am I paying for these books when they can only go to the library and the library is tiny as fuck, but they can only go to the library once a week, once a week. And they can only check out two books. Do you know how quickly my kids will read those books? Do you know how quickly my kids will read those books? Like why the fuck do I have to pay for all these books when it is required of me to have a classroom library full of books for my kids to read because they are required to read at an obnoxious pace that makes them not like reading. Why? Why am I paying for this? And on what salary? On what fucking salary? This is a great question. Thank you so much. If you guys like on the real this year specifically, if you want to buy your kids teachers a present, if you're like, oh, it's the first day of school. I want to get them a coffee mug that I saw at the grocery store. Put it down. Send your parent or send your teacher an email and ask them. What is something that you need for the classroom? Are there any projects coming up that you need help buying or you need help paying for? Is there something I can bring for one of your lessons? Is there something coming up like an event that you'd like to do that I can help you with? That will go so much further for your teacher than a coffee cup because I'm not going to lie. Every year for Christmas, I probably get six different coffee cups for my kids and I throw them away. I either throw them away, I donate them, or I give them to my parents, or I give them to a friend. Most of the time, Myra comes and takes them, not going to lie. But, like, that doesn't do anything for me. Like, ask them if they have an Amazon wish list. Ask them if they have a donor's choose. Ask them what are ways that you can help the classroom, either financially, with your time, if you need help laminating something, if you need another stapler. Like, literally, ask your teacher what they need instead of trying to find something at Target that they might like. And I hope that comes off in the most like kind way because although like it is very nice and as much as I love getting gift cards to Starbucks, like I'm very appreciative of everything I get 1000%, but knowing that I'm not gonna have to pinch pennies for my next check in order to ensure that my kids are gonna be able to have folders for their first day of school, like 
that is so much of a better gift than knowing that I can pull up to Starbucks right now and order like six different drinks because I have that many gift cards. Like I would much rather have the peace of mind that my kids are going to have the supplies that they need on the first day of school. I hope that makes sense. And by no means am I ungrateful at any point in this. Like I just wanted to, to say that because I feel like it would really change the game <laughs> if, if parents like asked that. It would change the game 1000%. Um, I'm like not getting through a lot of these questions and I'm so sorry. Pizza or pasta? Definitely, definitely pasta. What is your favorite book? My favorite book is The Giver. I reread it every year and it gives me a little something different um, each time I read it. So I really love that book. Um, what got you into decorative planning? I babysat my brother's dogs and he offered to buy me an Erin Condren planner um as like my payment for babysitting the dogs for like however long it was i already forget but that was my payment and i looked up aaron condren planner on youtube to watch an unboxing and then i found um mandy of mandy plans i found her account and i like binge watched all of her videos and then i was like addicted at that point so i shouldn't say addicted i'm so sorry i was you know invested at that point um, if you could go to any country where things are safe, like actually safe, where would I go? Honestly, I have no idea. Like I, I wouldn't even get on an airplane. Like I don't like getting on an airplane when there's not a pandemic because of the air quality. I don't know how I would do right about now, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get through all your questions. I was only be able to get through like 30%, but the spread came out beautiful. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will catch you on the flippity flip. Bye y'all.